Hello again, I am Blonty, and what you're looking at me through is the Logitech C922, the general recommendation for the best web camera you can get off the shelf for if you want to do things like Twitch streaming. However, it absolutely pales in comparison to this, which is the world's best web camera ever, and uh, it is this. It's kind of this. It's kind of used in combination with this. This is what lets me use a regular good camera as a web camera instead of using a web camera as a web camera. And as you can see, the difference is quite remarkable. As those of you who hang out on the Twitch streams with me will already know, about two months ago, I switched over to using my Panasonic Lumix G7 camera as my face camera for the streams after having recently replaced the G7 with the G85 as my, my main camera for everything else. And I did this by hooking the camera's HDMI output through this, which is the Elgato HD60S capture card, my uh, external capture card of choice right now, while my main content went through the HD60 Pro, which is buried behind the the graphics card back there, which is my favorite, current favorite, uh, internal capture card that's about to be replaced sometime real soon once uh, Elgato released their 4K version of it, <laughs> but that's another video. And feeding the camera through this thing worked great. Yes, there's a bit of extra cable clutter because you go from the camera to this and then from this to the computer and everything. And I had to install a special driver so this would cooperate uh, beside the other Elgato device in there. The, the, the default drivers, they don't, they don't like sitting beside one another, they fight. And, and yeah. Then came the announcement of the Elgato Cam Link, a device especially designed to do what I was doing in my little cobbled together setup. Up, except the cam link does it better, easier, faster, simpler. Internally, the cam link is very much the same as the Elgato HD60S here. They both take in HDMI source, they both top out at 1080p, and they both go up to uh, 60 frames per second. The main difference between these two is this is slimmed down somewhat. It does not have the HDMI output again, because when you're dealing with a camera, of course, you don't need to feed it back out again to a separate monitor like you can do with a uh, when you're playing a game because of the very very slight amount of uh, sort of frame lag you get from some of these things. It's very vital, not for all games, for some games. You need an external monitor, so you need to loop it back out again. Don't need to do that with the camera, so this doesn't have it. So when you ask, well, what's the point of having something like this when something like this already does that particular job? Well, that's your answer there. It is smaller, easier, simpler, and cheaper. So if you only have one capture device that you're already using for your video game stuff and you want to replace your web camera, this versus this makes a lot more sense. And while this and all the other capture devices like it identify to Windows as a video capture device, this identifies itself as a web camera. That's pretty friggin' important because what happens then is this will work with everything that a web camera works with and because Windows and Mac for that matter know what a web camera is natively, it's built in, you don't have to install any software, you don't have to install any drivers. What you do is you plug your camera in one edge, you plug this into a USB port and job done. It's working. So that means the cam link will work with any app, not just OBS and XSplit, the stuff that you know streamers tend to use, but it will work with any app that uses a web camera, so Skype or any other sort of video messaging type app or anything like that. But let's face it, how good does your video chat to grandma have to look? The main market for these things is obviously gamers. Streamers in particular looking to boost their production value. Again, what would you rather your, your people see you as this, this sort of soft, I mean, it's a very, very good web camera. It's about as good as web cameras can get, really, but it, it's soft and grainy and, and, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a literal world of difference between sort of switching between these two things and being able to use any camera you like. Wait, have I got this right? That one, that one, there we go. Just had to make sure I left it on the right camera. Um, and being able to use any camera you like means you can do things that you couldn't do with web cameras. Like you could use a GoPro, for example, which gives you that lovely super wide angle field of view. So if you're a crafter or a, or a cooking streamer or you know anything else that deals with you sort of doing stuff at a desk or something like that, you know, positioning the web camera to get sort of everything in view at the same time can be a bit of a pain in the ass. You have a big boom arm over the top and if you use a GoPro, it makes life much simpler because it has that lovely wide field of view. And if you do what I do and use a um, interchangeable lens camera, you get huge amounts of flexibility when it comes to positioning your camera, the type of lens you get on there, the field of view you're doing. You can do sort of, you know, shallow depth of field stuff. Let me just... You can grab yourself a, a zoom lens. And beyond the flexibility that uh, using any camera you like comes with, it also means that in low light situations, your camera feed is going to stay clean. Now I haven't actually adjusted the, the exposure for this level of light for this particular camera, but as you can see, it's still super clean. And if we switch over to the web camera, oh, 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 things have got ugly quick, haven't they? Let's put the lights back on. 
Oh, look at that exposure adjustment. And off again. There we go. Hmm. Uh, let's just... That's about it. So there we go. Low light conditions. Lovely clean feed. All I have to do is bump up the ISO on the camera a little bit. And uh, yeah, if we switch over to the web camera now. So you no longer have to just, just, just flood your face with huge studio lights just to make your camera look good. If you're like me and you're a bit photosensitive, you can keep the light levels low and uh, you know not be able to not have to squint at your at your bloody screen all the time because you've got studio lights flooding your face so your web camera doesn't look like crap. You can actually work in available light or have your studio lights at a much lower level, which means, at least for me, a much more comfortable experience. In short, Cam Lake means let me turn the lights back on there. Boop, boop. In short, the Cam Lake means you can have the world's best web camera at your disposal if you are a pro streamer, pro YouTuber, or just an amateur wanting to push your production value much, much higher than you have been able to until now with a traditional web camera. There are a couple of caveats, of course, with using this thing. The first one is obviously you need to actually own a decent camera which to plug into it, and that camera needs to have something what video nerds call a clean HDMI out, and that is a HDMI feed that is just the image, not the sort of dis stuff you normally see around the edge of the screen where you've got your exposure values and all kinds of settings and you know icons and stuff for the interface. Not all cameras spit out a clean HDMI feed. Although, because that stuff is normally around the edge, what you can do in some circumstances is crop that out and just zoom in a little bit. Your, web, your, you know, your face camera is usually a little window in the side of the screen, so that loss of resolution when you crop in, not really going to be an issue. Some uh, cameras, they'll have that little focus box, you can't get rid of that, that will be a little bit annoying. So, do check with the camera you use or are planning to use with the cam link that you do have what is called a clean HDMI out. And if you type your model number and clean HDMI out, uh, into Google or something, I guarantee you, you'll find a, a forum somewhere on a photography, you know, uh, or videography type uh, forum uh, that, are that are discussing the issue of whether or not that camera has a clean HDMI out and what you can do about it. The second issue is you have to find a way to mount your camera where you need it to be. I've got mine sitting on top of my monitor. I achieve that by using, uh, again, what's called in the video industry, uh, a magic arm or friction arm. Um, it's a little arm and a little knob on it. You tighten the knob and the two bits of arm sort of lock into you know, lock into place really, really, really solidly, like super strong. Uh, they're very common in the video industry. And I've just sort of clamped that onto the back of my monitor so I can have my, you know, my camera sitting where the web camera normally sits because, of course, web cameras... Uh, are designed to sit on top of a monitor. Normal cameras, not so much. There are lots of different ways you can sort of get around this issue as well. You can use a little tripod at the back of your desk or something like that, but the way I've done it uh, is, is for me, at least the most convenient way, the tidiest way. Also useful is a camera that can be powered externally, because obviously otherwise you'll be limited to your battery life. I use what's called a dummy battery, or a DC coupler battery, for my Panasonic G7. Some cameras, like the GoPro for example, can be powered directly off USB. So that's worth checking for your particular camera as well. And if you're wondering about latency, well, yes, there is some. It's not magic. All interfaces like this have some amount of latency, and it is slightly more than the Logitech web camera. Filming the feeds at 250 frames per second, I calculated a roughly 4.5 millisecond lag on the Elgato product versus the 1.25 on the Logitech webcam. That latency, by the way, as you may guess, is pretty much identical to what you'll see on the HD60S, which, as I've already pointed out, I have been using to make my G7 web camera for a couple of months now without any issue at all when it comes to syncing with my microphone feed. And both OBS and XSplit and products like them let you correct that slight discrepancy between microphone and cam link or capture device feed anyway. So yeah, the Elgato Cam Link. I've been wanting a device like this for years. Um, and it's here. And it's great. And it's basically flawless. I, I haven't had a single issue with this thing. Uh, I, I plugged it in and it worked. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So as far as sort of negative points in a review, I don't have any. It is precisely the product that I wanted it to be. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. And uh, you will never ever see me again looking like this. Well, I guess, except if I do an on-location shoot somewhere, and I don't want to bring the big camera with me. The web camera is still a tidy, I think, to carry with me somewhere else, I guess. Oh, and if you're wondering about my remote-controlled lights, that I'll be talking about those in a video coming up as well. They're really, really good. They're new. I've been fiddling with them for about a month now. Um, and if you've noticed the uh, quality increase, um, in particular in my streams, where I didn't really didn't have very good lighting before, um, yeah, we'll be talking about these soon from Aperture.
I'm not. It's moody. Someone put on some uh, Barry White or something, eh? 